bioreactors themselves are sort of the workhorse of biomanufacturing. Bioreactors can help us produce fibers, fuel, plastics, adhesives. The bread you eat has enzymes that keep it fresh longer. Dyes, small molecules, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of products. As industries are pushing for developing more efficient solutions, bioreactors are becoming more critical than ever. And yet how we design bioreactors has not really kept up in terms of the innovation needed. The bioreactor has not evolved that much from vats where, you know, a thousand years ago you'd have monks stirring them and now it's a motor, but still it's the same concept. Biomaid and Schmidt Sciences were excited to work together to fund this bioreactor innovation call to be able to leverage and accelerate new technologies into current bioreactor development. So what you're looking at here is an array of nine independent bioreactors. They're growing cells on the inside. So we can add media to supplement as they grow. We can control the stir rate as well as the temperature. And we sample these periodically to measure the cell concentration and measure the enzyme activity. And all that data then goes in and feeds our algorithm. Our goal is to create a reactor that is self-driving. So we had an idea to use an artificial intelligence-based approach called reinforcement learning to tune a bioreactor without a lot of manual intervention. So this machine learning model is trying to find the most optimal strategy to feed the bioreactor so that it can maximize on the amount of enzymes that it can produce. And once it finds the most optimal strategy, this model will be used on a physical bioreactor system so that it can feed that bioreactor without any human intervention needed. The economic potential of this is to control reactors at scale. So when they're producing tens of thousands of, of liters of capacity, it's making sure that each of those cells are making the most amount of product as possible. In a reactor, there are billions of uh, tiny reactors, because each cell essentially is a reactor. If they exist in a reactor where the conditions vary quite a bit from one spatial location to another, they will not perform optimally. We have built a Taylor Vortex reactor to enhance mixing and promote homogeneous fermentation processes. So in contrast to traditional bioreactors, Taylor Vortex reactors divide the fluid space into smaller compartments where mixing is very good within each vortex. These two here are more traditional slit tank bioreactors. You have two impellers. When you spin it, those two impellers will be causing the turbulence and mixing the system, which may create different variations in how it mixes. The Taylor Vortex reactor, as you can see from here, has a rotating inner cylinder and a stationary outer cylinder. And as we rotate this inner cylinder, we create this banded flow pattern that goes from the bottom of the reactor to the top. And this allows us to have much more control over the turbulence and also the microenvironment that the cells are experiencing and have much more homogeneous mixing when compared to a traditional stir tank. Typically, as you're bringing a product to market in biomanufacturing, you go through these process scales, starting out in uh, maybe a vial that's that big and going up to sometimes millions of liter sized tanks. Each step along this way, there's a lot of risk and there's a lot of chances for your process failing. And this can be exceedingly expensive as you're scaling a technology. The benefits of using a modular design for a bioreactor are as we grow, we are replicating these bioreactors rather than making them bigger and bigger. And this overcomes some of the challenges of unpredictability at scale. So when you think about bioreactors, they're a very complex system. There are many processes happening at once. So you need many sensors to measure temperature, oxygen depletion, metabolic activity inside the bioreactor. Traditional bioreactor sensors are typically these large probes. They require wires to be able to communicate with the outside world, and they're expensive. Versus what we are building are these small sensors. They are floating inside the bioreactor. They don't require 
high power so they can monitor for a long time and they can measure multiple parameters simultaneously as well. Today we're using our bioreactor technology to produce retinol, our first commercial product, as well as lubricants, acetaminophen, and aspirin. When we think longer term, we're excited to see the ability of having novel products come to market faster. The funding under the Schmidt Sciences Project will really push forward these capabilities in a way that can make a lot of products that traditionally have been challenging to produce cost competitively at scale. The impact that I hope to see long term from this project is integration of these technologies into existing manufacturing bases and continued innovation and advancement that can take us to even greater heights.